Hey guys, this is iTunes. I will be doing something different this time around, and that would be a modding tutorial. I've actually had a couple PM me and asked me how I've done the 3D models in my mods such as Porter Gun or Gravity Gun. So in this video, I will be showing you how to make a 3D item model in Minecraft. I'll try to be as detailed as possible in the video. If I happen to miss out on some information, I'll give an annotation, so be sure to look out for those. First of all, you will need a model, of course. Personally, I'd prefer Techni, as you can see right now. The model you're looking at right now is by Mr. Hazard. Many thanks. I'll be using this for exa our example. I'll be starting off at the point where the model is finished. It's looking just how you'd like it. Step 1 would be to make sure that in your model tree, every cube of the model has a unique name. There are no duplicate names and this is particularly important because they will turn out to be your field names in the Java class. Okay, step 2 is to make sure that if you have an asymmetrical model such as this one, you can see the scope is only on the left side, is to mirror the model on the opposite side. You can just click on the scope here as I have in the example, you just hit Ctrl C and Ctrl Shift V. That will make a copy of your model cube at the, uh, at the bottom of your model tree, you can just move it over to the right side of the model. And there, right now you have a symmetrical model. Just a reminder, you might want to change the model names to make sure they are once again unique. So that would be scope L and scope R just to identify them as the left scope and the right scope. Next up is to export your model as a Java file. You can do so by going to File, Export, Java. I'll be calling this file the Model Launcher. That's pretty much it for Techni. So here we are in Eclipse. Just want to add a note that you should have set full 3D called when you construct your item. This will prevent any rendering issues you might have later. Okay, moving on to your client proxy. This is the proxy class which is only called on your client. You would want to just add somewhere after your mod is initialized. Minecraft Forge Client Register Item Renderer and you gotta put the item ID there and an item renderer class here. So let's get to that. And a renderer class, you can always make a new one. I'll just make a new item render launcher. Over here, you'll be making a new class. And you would want to add the interface, iItemRenderer, if Eclipse doesn't do that automatically for you. Going back to your current proxy, you just want to cast it to an iItemRenderer. And as always, don't forget to add the semicolon at the end. And okay, so going back to your item renderer class, you just want to do some tidying up in your code here. This is my coding style. I would like to have the curly brackets at the on the next line. So you just have to gotta have a switch statement in your handle render type where you switch the type. And in case equipped, you return true. Next up is your should use render helper. You do not need to change anything here. You just gotta read leave this as return false. Going to the last thing that you have in the list, render item. You just have to have another switch statement in here. Where you switch the type. Once again, you have ty uh, the case equipped. And you should have a default that you just break. I right, want to add something that I missed out. Up here in your handle render type, you should have a case for default where you just return false. In fact, this isn't necessary. Okay, so now you're actually ready to import your model class. I'd just like to make a new package for my to keep my model, just to keep everything nice and neat. Now you can actually go to the directory where you save the model and just drag drop you copy files there and you definitely will get this um, the X over there just indicating that you have a ton of problems with your class file where this is where you take the step of correcting everything you gotta change the package obviously just a bit of need doing some tidying up here 
the class name you definitely gotta change it if it's different from in Techne as a uh, area you should want to change it to whatever you got here for the launcher and you have to import the model base and this is just a personal preference but I like to have fabric in front of every model renderer field I'll get back when I'm done with that okay so I'm done adding public to the all the model renderer fields I just highlight over one of them just import model renderer from net minecraft.current.model and all those errors should be gone now you just want to copy the class name and paste it there everything's almost alright except here you gotta import your entity you can leave this as is and set rotation angles because technique is a bit outdated there's actually has a new parameter at the end here entity which you can also add here to fix the issue of course you also gotta fix it up here so just do that last bit is to hit ctrl a and hit ctrl i that will fix your uh, indenting and there we go everything looks nice and neat now also want to add that uh, even though you just corrected your set rotation angles there is actually no need for it unless you're actually doing some kind of animation or anything to the model while it's in the hand of the player I will be going into that so we won't be actually needing it right now alright back to your item renderer class you just have to have a new field where you reference your model class I'll just call it a protected model launcher launcher model then you gotta make a constructor for your class and you call the constructor for the model you know tag theme I'm sorry Eclipse might give you some issues with here the red lines here you just gotta import the model and that's all okay now you want to be focusing on your render item you come over to the equip case and just like type gl11 gl push matrix and with every, with every gl push matrix you have that you want to call a gl pop matrix alright after that you would just want to be binding to your texture file for the model you just call forge hooks client bind texture I've already added, added the texture beforehand into the workspace. Just add the sub ID as zero. Then after that, you want to make another line which which actually unbinds the texture. This will prevent any issues with textures in the future. Just a pre as a precaution. And in between that, you'd like to reference your launcher model. You get the entity from the object data up here. It's the uh, second one, and for the these five floats here, you actually want to leave them as zero. And as the last float, you want to put zero point zero six two five, and they are actually ready to test it out in Minecraft. Okay, so here we are back in Minecraft. Um, I realized I didn't actually have a way to get to the item which I had initially placed the item renderer on. So I've actually put it on the placeholder item, the trail mix. As you can see, I do not have any item in my hand. It might look normal, but if you head over to third person, you can see that the model is actually rendered there, but it's uh, upside down right now. So you gotta call a couple of rotations, GL rotate F, to just uh, get it into the right position. Also, of course, right now the model is a little bit too small, so I'll be calling GL scale F to increase the size a little bit. Alright, so now back in Eclipse, you just want to call GL scale F. I'll just have a scale float here to make it easier for reference. GL11, GL scale F. You're going to be putting this before you call the launcher model render and just going back in game to just check it out. Back in game now, you can see that the model is actually a lot bigger than it was earlier. I've actually scaled the scale up to 1.8 because it was still too small. So right now, this, 
the model is the appropriate size just had to uh, rotate it right and I'll see you guys back in Eclipse alright so now you're back in Eclipse here you just got to call GL11 GL rotate F and this is the part where I have to cut off because no two models are exactly the same so the rotations for them are always a bit different you just gotta tweak it yourself and figure it out and hope for the best that you get the proper rotations okay guys so back in minecraft I've gotten all the rotations right now it looks just how I'd like it to be and you can notice that the position is off so back in Eclipse you just gotta go edit around with the GR11 the GR translate once again I can't show you what translation you should be using because each model is different you just gotta be able to figure it out by yourself but you might want to have the GL translate F after your rotation calls and probably before your scale call so you would be a lot easier and it makes a lot more sense when you're moving around alright so I've been playing out with the GL translate and as you can see I've got the model precisely where I want it just being in the hand of the player right there and I'd like to show you what happens if you forget to put, uh, to add is full 3D to the item when you're constructing the item as you can see the model is just blocking my face right now I cannot see anything even though as you can see in, fir in third person it looks perfectly fine but in first person it's just blocking your view you can't see anything uh, just as a reminder the solution is to make sure you add is full 3D when you construct the item if not you would have to go through the entire process all over again of translation, rotation and scaling. Alright, you got the model just where you want it in third person. It looks great. You shift over to first person and find that the model is covering a huge amount of your screen there. You're not really satisfied with first person. Thankfully, there's a solution to that. You just gotta render it differently in first person. Alright, so back in Eclipse, you just want to be adding something over here before the translate you just add a new boolean is first person which is false and now you want to add a check to make sure that your data is actually a player no harm having now checks of course And then you can wrap this GL translate here, the one you you've been having for third person here, in an else statement, just in case if uh, any other entities such as zombies or skeletons would, would accidentally pick up your item, that prevent any casting issues or even translation issues that would cause just basically make the model look weird. And then now in the uh, if statement to check if it's a player, you just want to have. Um, a check to see if it's rendering in first person or not. This if statement that I'm about to paste here is actually a particularly long one. I'll include it in the description. So just copy it out of the description. You can see it's quite long. You gotta import Minecraft, import GUI inventory, import GUI container creative, and import render manager. Now this situation is when the player is in third person so you want to just copy this uh, translate here in, else, in the else statement put it there and you have one else statement again over here where this is where you're rendering in first person so you gotta go set the boolean to true and down here you actually have any maybe rotation or translations which you want to make the model look nice in first person Okay, so I've added a couple more rotations and a couple of translations for the first person render and now it looks like this. Which is a bit more preferable compared to the position it was in earlier. And now next up is like, you'll notice that there's still two scopes, I'll get right to that. Okay, as you can see here, I've actually disabled the rendering of the right scope. But in actual fact, I've actually disabled the rendering of the left scope. As you can see in first person, the scope that used to be right in front of the player's face is no longer there. That was used to be the left scope. While in third person, you can see it. This is why I asked you to mirror the model earlier. is to overcome this problem. There's no other easier method to overcome this as far as I know. 
uh, so you got to make a special render for in case of first person and in case of third person. Coming back to Eclipse, there is a reason why I put the boolean up here. It's because you can actually pass it down here and once it's true, you can just add it to the end of this renderer here. Because this isn't actually called by any other classes other than your own, it's okay to add a parameter, there's no problems over there. Okay, on to the model class. All you gotta do is just add a new parameter here. As you can see here, I've actually disabled the rendering of the lab scope, which actually works in third person, but it does not work in first person. So over here, you want to put is if is first person, you want to be rendering the left scope, else you want to be rendering the right scope. I'm just gonna grab it from here, paste it there, and I'll see you back in game. Okay, back in game, and you can see that the scope is now rendering in first person, it's not rendering on the other side. In third person, it's also rendering in front of the player, there's no problems with it. Okay guys, just want to give you another warning over here. If you have rotations in your model, as you can see here, it might be a little bit screwy. As you can see there, the claws are supposed to be connected, but no, with floating pieces of models. This is actually a very easy fix. You just gotta go change something in the model class. I'm just gonna show you over here, where instead of calling model.render, you just gotta change this to render with rotation with the same parameter f5 and just gotta save that load back load that again in minecraft and everything should be fixed okay so back in minecraft as you can see the claws are now working right they're not floating anymore they're attached as they should be and now uh, that's just a main issue that you might want to take note of i hope this modding tutorial has cleared up some issues that you may have faced if you try to import the model in game for if you have any problems, leave a comment. I'll try to respond if possible. You can also have a couple of additions to your model. For example, in my final version of this model, I've actually added a stack of pigs on top of the launcher, as well as a variation where you'll see the number of pigs on top of the model decreases as the durability of the item decreases. Anyways, I hope this has helped you out a little bit, and many thanks for watching.